It's not my privilege to tell you about Dr. Carolee T. Bull, class of 81. Dr. Carolee Bull received her BS in biology from Ohio University, an MS in plant pathology from Washington State University, and a PhD in plant pathology from Oregon State University for her work on bacterial diseases of plants. She continued her work on the biological control of plant pathogens, disease-causing bacteria, and phytobacteriology as a National Science Foundation postdoctoral fellow at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich and at the University of Lausanne in Switzerland, and then as a USDA Agricultural Research Service postdoc fellow in Fresno, California. Dr. Bull joined the USDA ARS in Salinas, California in 1997, where, in addition to her rigorous research program, she made it her singular goal to become the Salinas Valley, known as the Salad Bowl of the United States, as well known for producing outstanding scientists as it is for growing lettuce. Dr. Bull has developed an award-winning mentoring program for underrepresented undergraduate researchers, many of them the sons and daughters of field workers and others in her laboratory. Her students regularly receive National Science Foundation funding, that's a $90,000 stipend, for graduate and postdoctoral research. She has received numerous awards for her mentoring. In 2014, Dr. Bull received the Secretary's Honor Award, the highest award for service to the nation in the field of agriculture, from USDA Secretary Tom Vilsack. Dr. Bull is a world leader in research in organic and sustainable crop production, bacterial taxonomy, and biological control of plant pathogens. Using new techniques that she developed, she has initiated crop rotation strategies and other non-chemical methods for management of bacterial diseases of vegetables and small fruit crops that are valued at over $900 million annually. She serves as the convener of the International Society of Plant Pathologies Committee on Taxonomy and secretary of the Judicial Committee of the International Committee on Systematics of Prokaryotes from 2014 to, through until 2017, where she adjudicates issues related to the taxonomy of all bacteria. Dr. Bull is regularly invited to present workshops and seminars on bacterial taxonomy for the USDA Foreign, Ag Foreign Agriculture Service and others at national and international locations. Dr. Carolee T. Bull has recently assumed the roles of professor and head of the Department of Plant Pathology and Environmental Microbiology at Penn State University. Perhaps some of you will have the opportunity to study with her there. Dr. Bull, would you please join me on stage? <laughs> it is my pleasure at this time, and on behalf of Swickley Academy and the Alumni Association, to induct Dr. Carolee T. Bull, class of 1981, into the inaugural Science and Technology Hall of Fame. Congratulations. <laughs> Good morning, Swickley Academy. How are you? Absolutely. I hope you're excited as I am today. I'm so happy to be here. You know, we heard about the stars. Fabulous. Don't you want to do her job? Absolutely, I want to do her job. We heard about working to, to look at the body and take care of our bodies. I want to do Mark's job as well. No, take it back. I really want to do my job. I love my job. And I think you heard that from each one of us. We have found something that we are passionate about, so passionate that, in fact, you can't keep us in bed. It wakes us up every morning and we say, I get to go to work. There are people in this country who have jobs that they don't do that. They wake up in the morning and they say, oh, my back hurts and I have to go out and I have to pick the lettuce and I have to pick the strawberries and I get a little bit of money to do that, but that is what puts food on the table, not on my family, 
food on my table. And that is what um, is going to help my sons and daughters be able to go to college. And those are the field workers um, that are producing the food that we all eat. How many of you ate this morning? I know, right? Isn't that fabulous? Don't you feel lucky? Every time I eat something, I'm thinking about the men and women and people who put something into that, the farmers, the field workers, the tractor mechanics, who put something into that food that we get to eat. Have you ever raised your own food? How many? Tomatoes, that kind of thing. Weeding is hard. Right? Don't you agree with me? Sometimes it's hot, it's sticky, right? It's really hard. But there are people out there every day doing that work so that we can uh, eat. So I'm a plant pathologist, and I want to tell you a little story. I was on a plane one time going to a scientific conference, and I sat beside someone who was an accountant, and he made a lot of money for a lot of people. And he told me all about his job and how important he was. And he was. He was really important because he was taking care of people's incomes that they had worked hard to earn. And he turned to me finally and he said, well, what do you do? And I said, well, I'm a plant pathologist. Now, how many of you have heard of plant pathologists before? I see three, four, five hands. Not very many. In fact, when I was at Swickley Academy, I had never heard about plant pathology before. Had never seen a plant pathogen, although I had seen lots of plants, thanks to Jane Conrad, and I'll come back to that in a second. But um, I said to him, I'm a plant pathologist, and he looked at me and said, do you think plants are important? <laughs> and I was dumbfounded, but not so dumbfounded that I couldn't make a remark back to him, and I said, well, and I exaggerated. And for those of you that know a lot about bacterial, you'll know I'm exaggerating. I said... Well, you know, plants are the basis of all life on Earth. And that's just a little bit of exaggeration because there are some bacteria that live in the deep sea that do not need sunlight to grow, okay? But they're very few in numbers of kinds. And so, in, in, a, in essence, plants are the basis of all life on Earth. And wouldn't you want to be a doctor of those things that are the basis of all life on Earth? Absolutely. So I, you know, I tried to explain that to him. He did not really believe me. And so this is why we need science for business majors. We need science for artists. We need everyone to know a lot about science, just as we need scientists to know about art and other things as well. Um, I want to talk a little bit about my time at Swickley Academy so that you can see how important my education was to me, um, my ac ac academy education was to me as I moved forward. I was a recipient of the James Cavalier Scholarship when I came here to Swickley Academy. Uh, it helped me be able to attend. I can remember that very first meeting with my dad and uh, Mr. Cavalier in his office talking about um, how we were going to uh, financially make it so I could come to Swickley Academy. Academy. And um, Mr. Cavalier and my dad were joking about um, the paychecks of people who work in, in, um, in education. And they're not the highest. They should be the rock star paychecks, really, because they are the people who allow us to excel and go on to, to do great things ourselves. And yet, they're not. And so they joked about it, but they found a way for me to make it to Swickley Academy. And while at Swickley Academy, I made a lot of great friends, but I did things I'd never done before. So there was a program, there were some very generous people in the community that would drop off tickets to the theater, to the ballet, to concerts, and the Academy would bus us up to Pittsburgh to see these fabulous shows. I saw all different kinds of shows because of the Academy, and I have a sense of art in my work because of the Academy. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about mentorship because mentorship has been a key component of my life from when I was little, whether we talk about my family, my parents, my aunts and uncles, my uh, Girl Scout comrades, my friends. We've all, um, I've been mentored by them and in some time, sometimes I've been luckily, lucky enough to mentor them as well. My first and strongest mentor at the academy was Jane Conrad, and Jane was the advanced biology teacher here. And at 8 o'clock in the morning, she would come in with an earthworm and would be so excited about that earthworm that you had to wake up. 
Like you had no choice. You could not sit there and say, oh, what is she going to talk about today? No, she was excited that this worm was aerating the soil. The soil is what um, nurtures the plants. The plants are what nurture us or the animals we eat. She was excited. So I was lucky enough to spend a lot of time uh, with Mrs. Conrad. Um, in fact, I was a Girl Scout, and she and I worked on part of my Girl Scout Gold Award, which is like the Boy Scouts, um, what do they call it for Boy Scouts? The Eagle Scout. Yeah, I know, you didn't know what it was called for Girl Scouts, but I, you know, I try to joke about that. Um, anyway, it's the equivalent to the, the Eagle Scout, and so she, she actually helped me with my project. And it was all about plants. And so I studied botany. And when I was at Ohio University, what was lovely about being there, where other people were trying to figure out how to study, I knew how to study because I had had two or three hours of homework at least a night all the years I was in the academy. Do you all still have that? Yes. You are lucky because when, I, I'm telling you you're lucky because those habits, the habits you start right now will be the habits you have your whole life. You will know how to get things done when other people do not know how to get things done because you're training to do them now. And that's really important because then you can direct the way things go. I want to talk a little bit about agriculture and what I did in the Salinas Valley. Um, so in the Salinas Valley, this, it is the salad bowl of the U.S. So today, just for today, you don't have to do it another time, but if you can, for today, when you eat any vegetable, and especially if it's a leafy green, I want you to think about the people who get up at 4.30 in the morning and leave their houses. They wrap themselves up because it's windy in the Salinas Valley. And they go out to the fields and they bend over. And I mean literally, they bend over. All day long. Try doing squats like that all day long. It's hard. And as a researcher, we would have to prepare to go and do what people do every day in the field. Right? And so, um, working with those folks, I gained a lot of respect for the work they do and for what they were doing for their sons and daughters. So they left, many of them are immigrants from Mexico or Central America. They left their countries and the people they knew and loved and the land they loved. And they come, they come um, to our country to put food on our tables, literally. And their sons and daughters, they don't have dreams for themselves. They have dreams for their sons and daughters. And one of those uh, young women, uh, Alejandra Huerta, just got her PhD at uh, University of Wisconsin in Madison. She started out as a migrant ed student. So her parents would move with the strawberry industry and she would catch her education where she could. You know, maybe a couple of weeks uh, down in Yuma Arizona, maybe a couple of weeks in Bakersfield, maybe a couple of weeks in Salinas. But she graduated as a National Science Foundation honor. That's one of the top 3% of the nation for, for science students. And that young woman is dedicated to that because she realized that her family's dream was that she achieved, achieved her dream and she worked as hard at her education as her family was working in the field. I would challenge you to do that. There are people working very hard, including your parents, working very hard. You have the ability, you have the mind, you have the body, you have the capability of going after your dreams with singular direction. Now, you may dream of being a rocket scientist or you may dream of being a rock star, and you may head off in that direction and you may find something else. I started out wanting to be a botanist but found microbiology and headed off into that direction into a career that is exactly suited for me. You will find your way, but head with all of your energy in a direction. Go for it. Try things along the way. And if something feels a little bit better, go in that direction. But don't count yourself short. So I had been working in the Salinas Valley, working with students there, developing this pipeline for students from um, farming backgrounds uh, into science. It literally was the best job in the world. I'm sorry, I really think my job is the best job in the world. Since I'm last, I might be right. Okay, so um, had the best job in the world, and then someone um, sent me a request to apply for this position at Penn State University. 
And I first threw it in the trash. I told him, yes, I would really seriously consider it, but I hit delete right after that. And then I began to think about it. My personal mission statement. How many people in the audience have a personal mission statement? I think that would be an outstanding senior school activity is to have students develop and faculty, by the way, develop a personal mission statement. Because a personal mission statement is something that talks about the core of who you are. Who are you as a person? What is important to you? And then it allows you to direct your decision making based on who you are and what's important. So my friend Alejandra Huerta, Dr. Huerta, will direct her research based on where she came from, from, a, from the family of field workers. I will base my research on the place where I come from, from my family and my experiences. You will do the same, but it's good to get in touch with that. My personal mission statement is to live a life of bliss that is filled with good health, meaningful relationships, and to leave an impact that is greater than the resources that I consume. I used to want to save the world. But now I want to get better than break even on the resources that I consume. And that's really important because I want the planet to have invested in me and for me to give back, right? So looking at this job at Penn State, what I came to realize is that I could more fully fulfill my personal mission and my personal dream at Penn State University than with the U.S. Department of Agriculture. And, I, and I've been there for a month now, and what I've realized is my new job is the care and feeding of faculty and students at that university, as well as um, the, uh, we're taking that department in a new direction. We are going to have a global impact and increasing diversity in the College of Agriculture there as well. And so I look to that and I look at that dream. My, right now I am the most uncomfortable I have ever been because I have never done this job before. And I, what I want you to know about that is, if you are uncomfortable, I don't care if you're dancing, I saw them dancing, and you're trying to learn a new step, I don't care if you're learning a math problem and you're trying to learn a new uh, theorem. When you are uncomfortable, you are learning. If you are comfortable, probably not learning. So your real um, goal and what Swickley Academy is very good at doing is at making, making you get comfortable with being uncomfortable. So, if you can get comfortable with being uncomfortable, you will always be able to go to that next level. Science is being uncomfortable. It's at being at the edge of what everyone knows and trying to figure out what is just outside of there. You have to be uncomfortable because you don't know. Nobody's going to tell you if you're right. You have to tell yourself. So with that, I say go forth, be uncomfortable, and thank you all.